Wash everything. <laughs> Wash everything twice. <laughs> you can look this up. This is not uh, conspiracy theory. This stuff is, stuff is, is, is fact. It's not. It's not. So an organic product is 95% plus organic ingredients. So you want to look for that USDA organic label. Energy. How much energy do you consume? Do you folks turn off the lights? Do you have lights on all night? Do you have motion sensitive lighting in areas where you're not in very often? Or do you just leave the light on all day? Have you changed out the light bulbs? Okay, that's, the kind of, that's all we're really interested in here. Right? And then what you also want to do is become wind power. Do the Al Gore thing also. I'm not telling you you shouldn't do the Al Gore thing. You shouldn't just do the Al Gore thing. So go ahead and get 100% wind power or something like that so you can close the loop. So those are two things that you can do is conserve and you can, you can um, offset your consumption with 100% renewable energy or whatever it is. You guys familiar with those programs? Do you have them? And there's a lot of um, weirdness going on, so wait for the backlash on that. I'm sure there's a lot of fraud and everything else happening, so I'm sure we'll hear some bad news on that stuff. Um, source, meaning on site. A lot of big facilities actually have their own renewable energy on site. Uh, I don't know if, if that would really uh, pertain to you guys at all. And then recapturing energy, that's really more for, for, for giant facilities. Water, how much do you consume? How much do you conserve? Probably not a huge issue for you, but it's something you definitely want to look at and you want to show that you're actually conserving. Put it on your website. Over the next two years, we want to reduce water consumption by 10%. People will love you for it. Land and biodiversity, more for plants, uh, your impact on the local ecosystem, working with local government, community relations, and that sort of thing. Probably not a big issue for you, more for a manufacturing facility. But I wanted you to see this stuff because this is what the sustainability is about. Some of you might actually work with manufacturing, so who knows? What else do we have? Oh, emissions, effluents, and waste. Greenhouse gases, air emissions, wastewater discharge. I asked you if you were pouring it down the drain or if you actually have to treat it. Now, there's some chemicals in some of these products that aren't very good for the environment. Stuff goes down the drain, where does it go? In your water, right? I live in the mountains um, where we have a well. So if we pollute our groundwater, we die. There's no water. There's no nothing. There's no water coming from the city. We have to be careful just because, uh, and, and we're also in Colorado, and it's a dry area, so we go through droughts and things like that, and your wells run out. Uh, we're very concerned with what we put down on drain because it ends up right in our water. In the cities, it gets treated. So we're, aren't we a little insulated? I also live in the city, too, during the week. Are, are we a little insulated somewhat? Yeah. So something to think about. Uh, hazardous waste disposal. You probably don't have to worry about that too much. Other waste disposal, what about all that packaging we have? 2% of our trash comes from containers and packaging. 52% is from paper and paperboard. The nice thing is that a lot of that stuff is recycled now. It's made from recycled materials. We now have 80 to 100% post-consumer waste packaging. The 100% is a little flimsy, right? But the 80% is good enough for luxury packaging. 80% meaning that only 20% comes from virgin raw materials. And only 20% comes from trees. The other 80% comes from the, the materials you provide when you recycle, right? Plastic, 16%, um, wood, 11, glass, 14. Glass is about the best thing because it's made of sand. If you go to the beach and see how the bottles and how they just kind of waste away, glass is it's pretty cool. Um, it's just basically heated sand, some pretty sustainable stuff. Steel, aluminum, a lot of stuff there. Distribution issues. We are interested in how things are transported. They're actually, FedEx just retrained their drivers on sustainable driving practices and have now saved millions of dollars in, in time and energy. Millions of dollars, you can look that up. I don't know what the hell they're doing. You know, don't floor it, I don't know what that means. Don't let the car run. What is it? And yeah, only make right turns. Uh, there, there's an actual school of driving for this. If you do it on a, on a, a huge scale, you're going to save a lot of money. For you guys, that's all about how do materials come to you. You're responsible for that stuff. You're responsible for disposing of all that waste, too. So you should have some influence over how that stuff comes to you, don't you think? Take control of it. Durables versus disposables. It is always better to have a durable, even if it's made of plastic and asbestos. Right? All molded together. It's still better to have a durable than a disposable. Plastic pallets are better than wood pallets because a plastic pallet could last 20 years, whereas you might go through 400 wood pallets. So it's better generally to have a durable. It's generally better to buy a, a, a razor blade, you know, the Mach 3 or whatever it is, 
um, rather than the disposable blades or the disposable uh, units. It's just better to be durable. Uh, you've heard about the plastic bags being outlawed in specific cities? Have you heard about that? Yeah. That's where it starts, folks. San Francisco, New York, Los Angeles. And we all laugh, but <coughs> it, it, it trickles down and over to, to everybody else. So they want cloth bags now. Did it take a lot of money? Yes. Did it take a lot of energy to make that cloth bag? Yes. Is it made of cotton? Probably. Is cotton good? No. But is it better than plastic? Yes. It is. So durables versus disposables.